All right, so I'll make a video here on how to tune a uh, LS for like a base startup for a, say you've installed a decent sized cam and um, you're having some idle issues and startup issues and whatnot. Um, we're gonna kind of go through all the basic stuff you need to change. Um, this is like the 4,000th time I've made this video. I've got some screen capturing software that isn't working very good. So I'm having to use my camera to just record the screen. I know it's kind of ghetto, but um, I'm kind of close to the camera. So if I'm, hopefully I don't sound like a fat ass and breathe on the phone, but. All right, so we're gonna start with the idle. Idle RPM, idle tab, RPM tab, base set point. All right, so what we're gonna do is um, I think the cam specs on this truck is like a 235 duration, 550 lift ish. You know, not a not a big cam, but um, we're gonna. I think we're gonna go ahead and leave this target idle at 900. Um, this is a buddy of mine's uh, file. He's been kind of having some issues with this thing, making it run. So some of these tables already been modified. We're gonna go through here and kind of. Just go through everything and look at it and put it where put it where I think it needs to be. But um, all right, so in the cold area here, we're gonna put about 1,200 RPM, and let's go ahead and bring that out to here. 1,200. We'll make this about say 1,100. And then we'll say about 950. And then everything else is gonna be 900. Um, and we'll make we'll make these both 950. All right. So that is our target idle speed. Um, 900 is a pretty good between usually between eight and 900 is a good spot to be on big cam vehicles. Um, the lower you set the idle RPM, the uh, the less torque the engine's gonna make at a lower RPM, so you're gonna have issues fighting. It's gonna make it more difficult to, uh, to get it to run right. All right, so all of that looks good. Now we're gonna go to airflow. Uh, base running airflow. Um, He's had to mess with this. Let's uh, let's get a compare file. Uh, let's see here. I think this isn't my normal tuning computer. This is my desktop, so I don't have uh, all my files on here. So it, it comes with some some preloaded ones. Where's it at? Camaro. Here it is. So we're gonna steal the base running airflow settings from a Camaro and paste it in here. All right. So let's say this is your stock, your stock base running airflow table. Usually what you can do is go in here and multiply this table by two. Um, that's going to get you pretty close. Um, the big deal on the base running airflow is you need to watch your IAC position in the scanner when it start when you've got it warmed up, fully warmed up, and you're looking at your IAC position, you really want it around oh about 70 steps or so at idle. If if it's open, I think the max is like 310 steps, I believe. I'm, I can't remember off the top of my head, but um if if you're maxed out, it's the engine's not gonna have any additional airflow, it's not gonna be able to add any airflow to when you come back to idle or other you know if it's if you gain load from you know the fans kicking on or the ac it's not going to be able to add additional airflow to make more torque so if you're let's say out you've you keep adding to your base running airflow and it's still not enough you're gonna have to open up the hole in the throttle body bigger 
if this is a drive-by-wire vehicle, if it was a drive-by-wire vehicle, you can keep adding to this base running airflow and not run into that issue. But on um, drive-by cable vehicles, if you're if you're real high up on the steps on the IC at warm idle, then you need to open up that hole a little bigger. A lot of people are going to bitch and scream, say don't don't drill throttle bodies but i've drilled a shit ton of them and it works every time um, i don't really suggest messing with the throttle plate screw you can if it's a aftermarket throttle body i know a lot of the aftermarket throttle bodies don't have holes in them so you you have to adjust the throttle body but on those the throttle body blade is so big that when you open it just small amounts you get a lot of extra airflow so um i would i would start by multiplying this by two and then work off of that um if you you can't really you can add you have you can have too much base running airflow and what will happen is usually when you're coming down to an idle the idle will hang real high and take a long time to come back down so you're not going to hurt anything if you go too high with it. You can always start backing it off. But I, I like to usually just double it right off the bat and uh, work from there. I kind of, I try to keep, I just multiply off of the stock setting. So you kind of keep your gap between your in gear and park. Um, yeah, so that's base running airflow. Um, your startup airflow your startup airflow initial what i usually do is come in here 140 over put 10 in and then select your whole table and multiply it by two this will add additional airflow on top of the base running airflow when it starts so um it, it kind of helps uh it'll kind of help solve some issues sometimes you'll have them start and they'll want to kind of stumble immediately after they start. This will kind of hold the, the idle up for a few seconds. Um, the delay is how long it will hold that high idle. Um, usually up to 32 degrees, I'll put about 25 revolutions. And then everywhere else I'll put... Uh, it just depends on how, how you like it. Um, 20 is fine too. You can you can play with these. You can go higher, lower if you feel like if you feel like the idle's hanging too long when you first start it. You can come in here and pull some of this out, or you can add to it. All right, um, throttle follower. I don't usually mess with throttle follower. If you've got um, if you've got your ignition set right your fuel set right and your base running airflow set right you don't really need throttle follower throttle follower you can use to say if if the idle's coming down real fast and it likes to dip past your set point you can make it bring that idle down slower but usually if you have if you have everything set right like i said you don't have to use throttle follower throttle cracker now what you'll run into here on a on a modified vehicle is your you're gonna this is gonna add airflow based on speed and rpm what you can run into on this is it it'll it'll cruise control what i call cruise control say you're running at 40 mile an hour and you let off the throttle if it's adding so much airflow, what they'll do sometimes is it will hold 40 mile an hour. It'll feel like, you know, it's just the, the cars are driving away on its own. So I like to, after ever I'm done with everything, this is kind of like final drivability stuff, but you can come in here and zero this table out most of the time. But we're going to leave it alone for now. All right. So let's go to airflow. Now this is going to be speed density, so we're not going to mess with the the math calibration um our primary ve so in here on a decent size cam vehicles they 90 percent of the time you have to pull fuel out down low so we're going to be targeting 
uh, about 900 RPM um, will probably go down to about 65 kPa depending on you know how much vacuum this thing makes it idle but at 900 RPM it's going to average between these two cells depending on where we're at in pressure so to usually come come in here and pull we'll pull um, let's say 12 percent and uh, we'll go ahead and select the whole thing smooth it a couple times just to kind of smooth out our our graph a little bit so we ain't got no big jumps and that'll be it for the VE for now obviously this is just just to get it started and running decent so we're 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 obviously going to spend a lot of time on this table later. All right, so we're not messing with either of these. Fuel, um, it's all injector data, which we don't need to mess with. We're running stock injectors. Oxygen sensors, I like to disable long term, oops, long term uh, fuel trims. Um, so usually what I'll do is put a, just a, a big number in here that I'll never see. Um, you can, I'm sure people, some people throw fit. You can come in here and change how the long term affects things, but I just like to disable it. Um, I try to, I, I leave short terms on. Um, I'll try to get it within, I don't know, three to five percent. Um, it's there's a lot of people preach oh you got to get it you know within one percent but the o2 sensors under normal throttle, con throttle conditions you know cruising or idle or whatever it's it's going to be able to five percent's not that big a deal if if you want to spend the extra hours trying to get it perfect then more power to you but all right so see here open loop don't need to mess with this power enrichment all right so on power enrichment um first thing we're going to change is the enable torque what this is if um we go past this percentage of uh desired torque it'll go into power enrichment also on here if we go past this is throttle position versus rpm so if we go past, if you give it more than 50% throttle at 3,200 RPM, it is going to go into power enrichment mode. So we're going to copy this and we're going to paste it into the cold table also. And then we do not want any delay on either. I think the trucks normally have like a 5,000 RPM and I think this will be like 10 seconds or something. I can't remember. They're, it seems like they're always kind of different, but yeah, you don't want any kind of delay. Um, these have, this has no cats on it, so we've got the protection disabled. Cut off. Um, so this one's got a 60 with a, <clears throat> I think you said like an HD2 kit. I don't like to make stock 60s shift over 6,000 RPM um, with the stock pump the stock slide spring in the pump and the stock boost valve they're really bad about bleeding pressure off above 6,000 RPM um, but with the cam he has we're probably gonna we're gonna set the uh, the shift points later on another video I'm gonna make another video on transmission tuning but we're gonna set the uh, shift points at 6,000 what the hell do it up here so we're gonna go through here um change all these so you gotta make sure you go through and change all of your rev limiters if you just change these right here and you forget to do the in gear it's gonna it's gonna mess with your head while you're trying to figure out what the hell's going on. So make sure you come in here and change all of the rev limiters. Let's get that one, that one. The This is disabled, but we're still gonna go ahead and 
change it. All right. Can't do anything with that. Nothing with that. We're not running a flexual sensor. All right. So that's going to be it for this video. I am going to make another one. There'll be a part two to this. We're going to go, we're going to talk about Spark. We're going to the Spark and the engine torque management and uh, a couple other things. Um, the Spark side of it's really important. It's going to take a little bit to explain. These videos get kind of long. So um, I'm going to end this off here. Make sure you uh, subscribe and uh, be watching for the next video. Thanks.